Hello, everyone, and hello for French people. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk about Swift Package Manager today, actually. Uh, sorry for the clickbait about relationship and all that. I'm going to talk about dependency resolution, actually, and, and how it works, how we solve that problem in Swift Package Manager. And recently, Swift SPM, I'm going to say SPM, because close friends. I'm going to say um, SPM changed its resolver recently to PubGrub. It's a different algorithm for dependency resolution. And a real quick word about PubGrub. It's an algorithm quite new. It's been two years, three years. It's, be, it's around. And it's devised originally for Dart programming language. And it has some advantages over other algorithms. That's why it's getting popular and popular among the package managers. And I'm going to try to explain how PubGrub works. And how am I going to do that? First, I'm going to uh, define the problem. What is the problem, dependency resolution? Why is this a problem? Why do we need that? Then I'm going to introduce the basics of PubGrub. Then I'm going to show you a real-world example case. And then I'm going to end with the big classic. So let's start with the problem. And in our Swift projects, we have package.swift file, where we declare our package and its dependencies. But we usually uh, give version ranges instead of exact version numbers. So that means package manager needs to come and resolve these ranges into exact versions. And this is the problem, going from package.swift to package.resolve. But it's not an easy problem. It's, a hard, it's an NP-hard problem, because there is no straight line between those two. Actually, the solution is much more complicated. It's somewhere like, you know, it's, it's somewhere you cannot see where you're going clearly. You cannot find the exit easily. So I think you have an idea, but I'm going to show you. It's a bit like this, actually. And it's a, it's a maze, actually. And OK, for the international audience, uh, I need to explain that. And you know Vim, right? Vim, text editor, Vim. OK, Châtelet Leal is the Vim of Paris Metro. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot. So yeah, let's move on. Now we have a maze. In the maze, we make decisions, and we try to find the right combination of decisions to find, way our, find our way out. Sometimes we hit dead ends, which means conflicts in our case. When we hit a dead end, we need to go back to the decision, and we need to try a different path until we find our way out. That's what we're going to basically do here. And we can, find, we can solve this problem by trying every possible combination blindly. But can we do better? Let's see. Let's see how PubGrub works, how PubGrub uh, improves the solution. At a very high level, PubGrub does two main things. First, it learns. It learns about the maze as it advances in the maze. It learns the facts. It remembers the causes and actions. Basically, it creates a map of the maze. So when it hits a dead end, it instantly know, knows uh, where to go back to take a different path. And it's also smart. It's smart enough to take lessons from the mistakes. So it doesn't uh, repeat the same mistake again and again, OK? <laughs> and that's also, I need to explain that. And I, ha I have no analogy for M13. It's like no other. But I can give you a trivia, actually, because um, people don't know about this, but M13 was built as a tool to try out different compression algorithms. It's a compression tool. It takes 2,000 people, compresses into one single carriage of metro. And <laughs> then it didn't work out. They pivoted. They changed the business model. They become a metro. But it's originally, it's a compression tool. Anyway. Anyway, uh, when I say smart, I mean it's not like AI or machine learning smart. It's not, it doesn't use blockchain. It's just logically, pure logically smart. What do I mean by this? I'm going to show you a little uh, simple logic trick here. That's a logical expression, A or X, and B or not X. OK? Uh, let's think about it. If X is true, the first part becomes true automatically. And we depend on B for this expression to be true. And if x is false, second part becomes true. And we depend on a for this expression to be true, right? So what I can do is I can reduce, I can resolve this whole expression into simply a or b, right? So what does it give me? Why do I need this? Let's see in the PubGraphs case. 
in PubGrub, uh, if you have a dependency like that, band version one depends on drums version one. If I represent this constraint as a dependency, I need to say band version one and drums version one must be my solution at the same time. But that gives me an and statement. It's not an or statement. And I need or statements to do this trick, this logic trick. I forgot to tell you, sorry. And so that dependency doesn't work for me. That dependency model doesn't work for me. So what I need to do is I can go to, I can flip it around. I can look at the incompatible versions. And I can say that if band version one depends on drums version one, I can say band version one is incompatible with all the other versions of drums. Right. Right. <clears throat> Sorry. So what does it give me? If I model this constraint in that way, I can say that band version one and not drums version one cannot be in my solution at the same time. And if I rewrite this expression, it gives me an or expression, right? So why is this important? Because let's say drums version one also depends on guitar version one, another, another dependency, another package. And it's, this transitive dependency is implicit now. But if I write this constraint in the same form, not drums v1 or guitar v1, I can, I think you see where it goes, right? Okay. I'm gonna give you a little push again, but okay. Now X becomes drums and I can do my magic and I can just resolve these two expressions into one and I can make this implicit transitive dependency and explicit dependency. That's why in PubGrub we represent dependencies in the form of incompatibilities, right? Okay, uh, I just explained how we uh, represent dependencies and constraints in PubGrub. So let me show you a real world example case. In this example case, we're gonna see a real, uh, uh, well, I think it's the first draft. Can you? That must be the first draft, Julian. No, so done. no it's in the folder. It, it must be in the folder. <laughs> oh, I know this, this tune. Is that acid aggressive K pop? Almost right, but you cannot know this song because it's really? the, it's a new song from our new album. Oh, you have an album? Yeah, it's it came out yesterday. You cannot know it. You have an album? I didn't tell you. No. Wow. Oh. Hmm. Uh, actually, we have time. So maybe. We. We'll, I'm going to show you something cool. Okay. Yeah. Really? yeah. No, no. I mean, it's it's presentation. Uh, no, but that um, was boring anyway. So. Ah, look. <laughs> Uh, Unresolved identifiers, I'm sure. That's us. It's gonna be, oh, nice. That's my band, yeah. And, okay, let me show you the history. It's, you, it's you younger, right? <laughs> With more beard, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's our first album, Gluten Free. Okay. And it was a huge success. But, you know, success brings fame, fame brings problems. It's, you know, hard to deal with. Then we started doing yoga and meditation to overcome. And we did it so hard, but so, so hard. And it became a theme for our second album, Namaste. Uh, we opened our third eye, actually, right? <laughs> and I told you about the problems. We tried to avoid talking to press about the problems, but I think it's time to face it. Yes. So I'm going to tell you about the problems. But first, I need to introduce the band members. This is Maynard, one and only, our vocals, great guy. Adam, Justin, and that's me. Uh, and one day, our band manager came to us. He said, uh, you're a good drummer, OK drummer, but I found a better drummer, which, is play, which plays better than you. So I said, OK, I'm OK drummer. I have to accept. And the problem is, this guy, Lars, wants to play with Maynard. Maynard wants to play with me. You look confused. Yeah, yeah maybe okay. you can switch the language. Yeah, I'm gonna let me switch the language quickly here. In uh, oh, in Swift, better. <laughs> better. It's uh, it's basically this, but you know, I'm I support biodiversity. I protect endangered species, so I want to protect Objective C people in the audience. So I want to change the Swift, and I'm gonna show you this diagram. Uh, what we have is, we have a band which depends on drums, any version of drums, either me 
or drum version 2, which is Lars. So we don't care. But the problem is, drums version 2, Lars, depends on Maynard, vocals version 1. And vocals version 1 depends on me, drums version 1. So at that moment, I said, can Swift Package Manager resolve the conflicts in my relationship? And I said, why not? Let's try. So that's basically it. That's the problem. And we have our maze again. And uh, what we're going to do is, at every step, we're going to look around. We're going to learn about the maze. Then we're going to try to make derivations with what we learned. And if we cannot do any of these, we're going to make a decision to keep going. So let's start. What we need is a drummer. So first, we enter the maze. We come to a junction, and then we look around. We look around, and we see two options. We see drums version 1, drums version 2. And we see there is no dependency on drums version 1, so it's safe, it's OK. And we see a dependency on the side of drums version 2, which is an incompatibility in PubGrub's language. So I learn about this constraint. I take it. I keep it in my pocket. And now I, need, I try to make a derivation, but I cannot because I do not have enough information about the maze. So now I need to make a decision between drums version 2 and drums version 1. Uh, sadly for me, we choose drums version 2 because, you know, better, faster, stronger. You know. <laughs> then um, we have drums version 2 in our solution. So now I can make a derivation because I have this incompatibility and I have this decision. So when I merge, when I uh, use them to make a derivation, I can derive that vocals version 1 must be in my solution. Otherwise, I'm going to have a conflict because of this incompatibility. So I take the vocals version 1 to my solution, and I go ahead. But vocals version 1 brings its own incompatibility, and that gives me a dead end. Because look, what, what happened there? The terms of this incompatibility are satisfied by the other terms in my solution. Uh, vocals version 1 is satisfied by the derivation. The vocals version, um, sorry, drums. Yeah, vocals version 1 is satisfied by the derivation vocals version 1, and not drums version 1 is satisfied by the decision drums version 2, because drums version 2 is uh, contained by not drums version 1 subset. And what I need to do is I need to go back to the last decision before the root cause, and I, then I need to merge the conflict incompatibility, conflict incompatibility with the root cause. And then I'm going to try again. So I can find the root cause easily because, as I said, uh, PubGrub learns everything and remembers all the causes, actions, and it creates a map. So it has this graph, but what's satisfied by what and what's caused by what. So I can easily find the root cause. And I also have my uh, conflict incompatibility, so I can merge these two with that logic trick we saw earlier. And what I have is, I, I just learned something new. I had two incompatibilities. They give, in a way, they give birth to a third one. I learned something new out of two existing, existing uh, incompatibilities. And what does that mean, basically? That means drums version 1 and any other version but uh, V1 of drums cannot be in my solution at the same time. That basically means if I choose drums v V2, I automatically have a conflict because not drums V1 is satisfied instantaneously. So I can normalize this incompatibility into simply drums V2. So I just learned something new. I know where to go back. So now I go back to that, to that point in my maze, and now I'm going to make another derivation thanks to this new incompatibility. So now I can derive. Uh, I cannot choose drums v2, so I need to choose anything but drums v2. So thanks to that derivation, now I make another decision. And I make drums v2 decision. And now I can see all the dependencies are satisfied. And now we can go back playing. And we can have fun with our fans. Fans, you know. And that's good for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a happy ending. Actually, that's a happy ending, and uh, that's basically how PubGraph works. And you may ask why I told all these things. But actually, I'm not talking about PubGraph. I'm mostly talking about the mindset. We have our we have Swift Package Manager. We have Swift. It's all open source. 
There are a lot of hidden gems there. For example, I talked about PubGraph, but there's also like dictionary implementation in Swift we can look up. There are a lot of very interesting but underappreciated problems and solutions in those open source uh, repos. So what I'm trying to say basically is just go there, be curious, learn about these things just for pure joy of learning. That's and how, my how did you learn about that? Blog well, posting? actually, uh, how I learned about it, I was trying to find out you how... You had a problem with the band and you needed to solve it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, th because of last guy, yeah. This, this guy can play 4-4, but nothing else. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. No, seriously, <laughs> yeah, was a blog post, or did you have to, to go into the code and, yeah, and actually, understand uh, it? I knew this year is going to be Swift UI year, so I knew I had to make it talk not about Swift UI. So I, I, my target was SPM, and okay, let me give it in perspective. I, I need to put that in perspective. Let's say if Swift UI is Neymar, great star player, lot of problems. <laughs> if let's say Catalyst is like like Benzema, good player, but controversial, and uh, I think SPM becomes Angolo Kante in this case. Underappreciated, top performer, consistent, great guy, but underappreciated. So I think we should, we should, we should give our appreciation to SPM. Thank That's you very much. That's what I'm trying to do. Thank you very much for that. So thank you, Emir. Thanks, everyone.